Welcome to the Capoeira Experience Podcast, where you are going to learn how Capoeiristas got where they are, how they keep the motivation, why they do what they do, and even how they do business through Capoeira. I hope you enjoy it and learn something from their experience. What's up, Capoeira Nation? Welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast, where we connect with our Capoeira community and we help you to motivate yourself. So you can push a little bit more, you can train more, and you can keep that motivation with Capoeira. And uh, keep this connection with this beautiful art in our community. This is your host, Instructor Kashishi from Capoeira Brazil in Indianapolis. And thank you so much for the support and uh, keep listening to our podcast. So today, I have the pleasure to interview a Capoeirista from Amsterdam. Capoeira changed his life completely gave him an opportunity to take a different course in his life. He has about 10 years doing capoeira, and he has a really good work in Europe with kids and adults. He's a really good example that capoeira can help us to change our life. I want to introduce you to Instructor Tom from Capoeira Batuki Capoeira Amsterdam. How are you doing, man? Hey, salve, salve. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, of course, of course. Thank you so much for, for reaching out and uh, wanting, willing to be in the podcast. Of course, thank you for having me. Of course. So I'd like to, to start the, the interviews with, with a story, with your story. But before we jump to that, what are your social medias? How people can find you? So my group is, uh, like you said, Batuki Capoeira Holland. Okay. It's very easy. We have the same website, which is capoeiraholland.com. And Instagram is also Batuki Capoeira uh, or Batu Capoeira Holland. You can find us. And my personal Instagram is Tum Energia. Uh, nice. You might see below later. Nice. <laughs> you can find us and uh, we'll visit the group. Nice. Nice. Awesome. And uh, so what is your story, your Capoeira story from the beginning until now? And you can start how are you want. Tell us who you are. Um, so yeah, well, my name is Energia, which is my Capoeira name, and which oh, uh, okay, nice. kind of combines with the, what uh, describes me in Capoeira. So, uh, as a kid, I was like really into martial arts, you know, like Bruce Lee and stuff. And, uh, nice. but I was born in a very small village and I didn't know any martial art. Back then, you only had like karate and boxing and that's it. And judo. Oh. So we played this game, Tekken, you might know it yeah, Tekken. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So I was playing and being like, wow, and I had two older brothers and I saw this Eddie Gordo, you know? Oh, man. Nobody knew what was Capoeira back then. So we were like, yeah, that's Eddie, the crazy dance fighter. So yeah. I was all playing Eddie and then doing stuff. And, uh, and I wanted to train martial arts. So I had this one friend at school and he did karate or taekwondo or something. And I said to my mom, mom, can I train with this guy? And can I do it as well? And my mom said, no, no martial arts. You can play hockey and play piano and that's it, man. <laughs> so... <laughs> Skip forward 10 years later, I was like 16, 17, and I moved out of the house to, uh, to go to college or some, how do you call it, a university or whatever. Okay. And the first thing I did, I was, I was like, man, I want to do martial arts. So I was with my friends. I was into the, the, the heavy metal scene back then, doing some mosh pit stuff. I was like, you know, I've never been an aggressive guy, so I wanted to do something different, you know. And then I saw this capoeira, and I remembered, man, capoeira, that's what I want to do. So nice. I moved where Arnhem and I get into contact with my professor, Chris Veminoso, and I said, man, when can I start training capoeira? And, uh, well, I entered the hall imagining like I would all learn all these crazy flips and spin kicks. Yeah, yeah. And the first thing I heard when I walked up the stairs was a beanie bow. I was like, what? Oh. You know, man, the first <laughs> time you hear a beanie bow, I was like, what? And then I heard yeah. the guys batting away and zoom, 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 like I saw in the movie, like only the strong and stuff. Uh -huh. I this is like I saw in the movie. This is the real thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hype, man. And I was like in the heart. Of, and my teacher sometimes, he's still laughing at me, like the face I made back then. And uh, yeah, that's guys, how I feel. Like, I was like, man. No, and I, I started training every day immediately. I was that's like, awesome. I, I, don't, I dived into it like, we're gonna, I'm going to absorb all of this. And then later I learned to control it more, you know, and stuff. But uh yeah, and as I told you, you know, it was it wasn't a good period for me back then. I was kicked out of high school. I was okay. uh, smoking a lot of weed, which is kind of normal in Holland. But uh, I didn't train any sports. I was really uh, fragile, okay. really like sixty kilos, and uh, only smoking weed and drinking. And uh, and thanks to Capoeira, I found like like purpose. And uh, nice. I got 
take it seriously, man, you know, because I want to do all these flips and these kicks. So I got to be healthy. So yeah. I quit smoking, I quit drinking, I quit, quit uh, weed and drugs, and I started focusing on my school and my job. And yeah, 10 years yes. later, I, I'm working with Capoeira. Yeah, so how old were you when you started like smoking weed and all, um, drinking a lot and all that? And it's, it's, it's kind of weird because, you know, like I had two older brothers and uh, yeah. I was 14, 15. I just came from, uh, just started the high school and I was, I was smoking, you know, uh, weed like once a week, twice a week. And then when I started living on my own, right before I started doing capoeira, it was daily at oh, school, wow. okay. school, after school. It was the only thing on my mind, you know, I just, I, I didn't have money. I, I didn't have uh, clothes or friends. I was all alone in the city uh, doing this, uh, this, this university, this school. Yeah. The only thing I had, because I, I didn't have any sports or hobbies or music, so the only thing I did was just sit in my room, you know, play games and smoke. And yeah. I knew it wasn't good, but, you know, it, it was an escape. It was an escape from reality. Yeah, yeah. And I said, so you smoke and drink by, dying, by, by, by that time, right? Yeah, by that, yeah, yeah. But drinking wasn't, you know, in Holland, it's kind of not just drinking. I wasn't like yeah, uh, yeah alcohol at it or whatever and even the weed it was just you know a few a day so yeah uh, but uh back then i thought i, I was like uh, for my age it was normal but now when i see kids 15 16 i'm like wow i was way too young man i was way yeah. too <laughs> yeah back, I didn't, didn't think about it that way you know yeah yeah well, i mean when we're on that age and we do those kind of stuff because I, I started drinking when i was like 15 16 yeah exactly and yeah. I, and I started drinking like almost every day until I was like, man, I think this is enough. <laughs> yeah. Then now I see back and same thing. I'm like, man, I was a child. <laughs> Pretty much. Shit, man. Yeah. I still am. I still am though. But, but that back then I was like a real kid. And yeah, I thought I had it all figured out. But, you know, then I, I met Capoeira and I, I was like, wow, this is, this is what I have to do. I, I don't care how, but this is what I have to do. Yeah. Yeah. So you smoke and drink before Capoeira. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So, and Capoeira pretty much like took you out of those kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And now, was that like that moment from the first day when you say like, I really like this? Capoeira. Capoeira, Capoeira, yeah. <laughs> Man, it was, <laughs> it was all I imagined and even more. You know, I saw this, I saw these guys doing these kicks and, the, you know, like the Mealu and the Carousel and also I was like, Man, this is the stuff, man. This is Eddie Gordo. This is the real Yeah, thing. yeah. You so know, it's pretty much like Eddie Goro on life. Exactly. And it's, it's just like with, uh, with girls, you know, we all say like you fall for someone's personality. But the truth is, just like girls in Capoeira, you fall for the looks, you fall for the Capoeira kicks and the stuff. And, yeah, the, the yeah, yeah. and then you get to know Capoeira and then you fall for the, for the, for, you know, yeah. the inner music, the language, the, the, the philosophy, the manjinga, you know. And yeah. Yeah. The deeper you go, the more you get to you, know Capoeira. You, you, yeah, exactly. The deeper you go, more you love and more you like and you want to know more. Exactly. Just like with a relation, whether a guy or a girl or whatever, you know? Yeah. You see someone you're like, oh, they're pretty. And that's what I thought of Capoeira, the kicks. I thought it was cool. But then I started loving the music and uh, then some injuries happened and then you have to appreciate other things in Capoeira. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so then um, same thing happened with me. When when I started in Capoeira, the first time I saw Capoeira, uh, so I saw all the back flips and this guy was like talking about Macaco and Nau and I'm like, what the hell are these guys talking about? And then when I saw it, I was like, dude, I got to learn this stuff. Exactly. Then, the, then the guy gave me like a paperwork to like fill out for the, for like a disclaimer stuff. And yeah. at the very end was like, give me the reasons why you want to do Capoeira. And the, I just did, I want to learn back flips. <laughs> and then Everyone. that was like, the, yeah, like the first, probably the first year. And then after that was like, man, then there was the beating ball and then was like the hard and then there was the music and then the culture and then, man, now I don't, I don't even know where I want to start in so much stuff. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So then now coming to, to the present, um, I want to break the interview in two parts. So the first part is going to be about Capoeira, how, how. You, you capoeira story, how is the capoeira community there in Amsterdam and all stuff. And the second part is going to be how you handle everything by, behind curtains, you know, because I think you have a pretty good work. Like we were talking before the interview, you you are doing pretty much full-time capoeira. Yeah. And that, that's pretty much almost, I, I will 
if someone starts teaching, I'm pretty sure someone wants to get there. So how how do you get from day one or or when you start teaching to full time? How do you get there? So uh, for me, the thing was, well, I'm like an all or nothing guy, you know, with everything, just like training capoeira or training, whatever. Uh, it, it's either 200% or zero. So I was thinking about, you know, I want to train more and I was traveling and training and going to Brazil and everything. And then one day, my master, he called me. He said, hey, Anagia, uh, I need to talk to you. Okay, you know, and he said, we have this group in a, in a city far in the north and uh, I need you to teach there. So I was like, okay, cool. I have to do one class. You know, I, I did some classes when my, my, my teacher was ill or injured. So I was okay. He said, no, 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 permanently. Oh, to wow. Take over the group. I was like, wow, what happened? Yeah, the current instructor, he's uh, moving and stuff's happening, you know. So there's a group there, three or four people. It's a small group. Nice. But, um, yeah, we need someone to, to like, uh, take it over and, and start yeah. uh, reading some new life into it. And I was like, I was like so flabbergasted because back then <laughs> my rank was, uh, I was, I was just doing capoeira for uh, uh, six years, maybe. Uh, okay. A short time and there were other instructors above me and I was like wow, wow, why don't you ask them he says yeah they're great capoeirista but you're a teacher and I was also studying to be an elementary teacher oh and cool okay I, and my passion is to teach uh, you know I, I love teaching and, and getting dope. people involved you know and, and uh, to find their own path and it, it, I just love it and he said yeah I want you to do this so I, I, can't, I, I went there I said to these guys man I can never fill the shoes of your current instructor but together we can try to get some, you know, plant some new seeds of capoeira and nourish them and see what happens. Yeah. So I started teaching just for fun once a week with three students. And I mm -hmm. had a two-hour drive. I teach one class and two-hour drive back. So oh, I wow. Lost a lot of money, but I was like, okay, I want to do this. It's my passion. Yeah. And, uh, just with a lot of dedication, then the group grew and it went five people, 10 people and 12 oh, people. Wow. And I started teaching kids, man. And I had the kids class, the first kids class. I didn't do any promotion, like like big. And I thought, like, oh, I hope some kids come, you know. And it was like ten minutes before time, and no one showed up. I'm like, oh, it's oh. coming, you know. Five minutes before time, no one. And then ten kids showed up. Oh wow! I, I couldn't even believe. It. I was like, are you guys yeah. here? Where? Yes, we're here for Capoeira. I'm like, okay, wow, let's go. Nice. And then the kids, man, it it blew. I have like thirty kids now. I don't know oh, about cool. I, and that's 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 a lot man i have a lot of kids yeah. and like 15 adults in that uh, city now and i still remember the days when i went there with three people you know traveling and training and doing yeah. everything by myself showing everything by myself and with one uh, one girl who helped me a lot and uh, now i have this huge group there i have kids uh, doing backflips playing beating balls awesome. and uh, going to batizados and uh, yeah then i started teaching other cities and I had some hard time, man. I started in a new city and I was like, I'm going to give it 200%. Yeah. And I was first class and I went on TV, national TV, and yeah. I was in a newspaper and promoted. I promoted out of it and no one showed up. Oh. And this <laughs> week, no one showed up. And the next week, no one showed up. Oh, and I could, man. And, and I, I cried, man. Yeah. I was yeah. with all this passion, you know, to teach, to do capoeira in the city. And no one showed up, you know, it wasn't like they showed up and they hated Capoeira, but they just didn't yeah. know. And then I decided, okay, now I can cry or I can just put on music and train because I'm paying for the, for the, for the hall anyway. Yeah. So, you know, so let's go for it. So I went there every week, uh, traveling 45 minutes, knowing that nobody would show up. And still I went, I put on the music, I trained by myself, I went home and I repeated next week. And I kept doing that for half a year. So oh. six months. Most people would have quit the first month, I think. But yeah, I, I go, yeah. I'm do this. I'm gonna do this. And then a few kids showed up, and then it started growing, you know. And we hit this 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 mark. And I was like, okay, okay, let's. I realized that this city wasn't big enough for capoeira. There wasn't any uh, uh, well, people intending to do capoeira. But I'm really happy that I stick through it, even yeah. You know, up for half a year and now i have a lot of uh, capoeira workshops in that region because i once planted a seed there so uh yeah i think the best way for me at least in teaching is uh, you know not 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 talent or lack of promotion even the more i promote the worse it, w it was but i think <laughs> i don't stop that's my problem and i just don't stop i just yeah keep on, you know yeah the, the how how do you have those kids that and the and the 
other city of the two two hour city. Yeah, how yeah. how do you ever ask them like how do you know about Capoeira? It's all uh, how do you say uh, mouth to mouth like uh, okay yeah yeah. So the parents they go to the school and they're like wow my kid is doing something so cool and uh, this guy is, is it's so funny and he's uh, teaching them all these life lessons and things about the heart and you should try it and then they bring new kids. And I was at this point and I'm like, man, I cannot handle any more kids. It's too much, man. There's 30 kids running around. I'm like, wow, you know, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful, man. It's, uh, it's cool. And then the parents, they're watching the kids. Yeah. And the parents were like, I want to give it a try too. So oh, then uh, cool. now I have even parents training with their kids together. And that's, it's beautiful to see that. That's one. awesome. That's awesome. Do, do you ever like, like have like a night over capoeira for, for kids and parents? Yeah, yeah. Once a year, we have the. It's called the annual uh, parent kit event. It sounds better in Dutch, though. And it's uh, we get all the parents, and then my teacher, my professor of Emiloso, he comes, or my master Vladimir, and they give a special class for my students okay. with parents. And it's like 60, 70 people walking around. It's, it's really cool, a big hall, but it's completely full. And we get some drinks and we get some food, and it's just uh, basics. Because I want the parents to uh, experience what their kids are doing, you know. Yeah, just yeah, that's awesome. Feel capoeira. They yeah. don't have to go train capoeira after that, but they just get this moment where they completely understand what it is their kids are learning and doing. Yeah. And them after the class are really interested in participating or training or traveling with us to events or, yeah. That's awesome. Plus that kind of like connect a little bit the parents with, with the kid. Uh, yeah, exactly. To to have this 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 moment because I think well, uh, I think it's beautiful as a parent to be able to connect with your child in that oh, way. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. Then, do you have like a limit for kids when you are by yourself? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just as many as you can. <laughs> yeah, but, but nowadays, I'm sometimes I'm like, okay, this is too much. Um, but the thing is, the, the the core of the group, like like 15 kids, they're training for a few years, so they're they're like um, how do you say, properly raised. Oh, okay. So they know the, how to buy the game and how to listen and how. So when new kids come, they copy this behavior. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, okay. It, it's never too uh, busy or negative in what way because no, none of the kids they, they the, the kids just see and repeat. You know, monkey, monkey. Yeah. See, and they see all these kids sitting and waiting and uh, not speaking when I speak and buying the game and looking and, you know, being careful. So when new kids come, they copy this behavior and that way I can expand without like overstressing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you have the kids pretty much connecting with other kids and like they exactly. copying on all that. That's awesome, man. That's, that's a pretty good, smart to, way to do it. Because sometimes when it's too many kids and one just one that one <laughs> yeah that's yeah. Like getting like too hyper yeah you know? yeah yeah it's like yeah. it's like contagious yeah yeah it's, but it's 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 good you know and the thing with that's the kids awesome. they, they, they like to have some some kind of structure and it's hard yeah. because Canada has structure without having structure you know we have like yeah yeah i always say we don't have rules we have like a, a table manners how do you say so i'm going everything out but it doesn't mean you should do it you know you can't give yeah yeah data, but it doesn't mean you should do it every day. And that's exactly, hard. Yeah. yeah, you know, even for adults to be like, okay, yeah. so it's a boundary, but it's not a boundary and it's not a rule. <laughs> it's still a rule. Yeah, so yeah. I do with the kids always, instead of telling the rules, like this is what you should do, I always ask them, what do you think uh, we do with Capoeira? What's the goal? And why? Especially the why is the biggest question ever. Why? Yeah. Why would you buy the game and throw a carousel, you know, because you're yeah, having yeah. A And you're like, instead of saying, hey, man, how are you? You enter with, my favorite thing of this week was this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See someone, you're like, hey, how are you? And then, yeah. you know, you start having a conversation and then you get a tricky question like, hey, what do you think of politics? Yeah. It's the same as a capoeira game. And then kids understand it, you know, and with the why they get, okay, these are uh, our rules, but you know, like, uh, how do you say, ways of behavior. Yeah, yeah. You, you kind of can play with the rules without skipping them too hard. Yeah, and without yeah. making to because that's a beautiful capoeira that is not so yeah. strict you know yeah exactly find yeah. your own rules within the in the river of capoeira man <laughs> yeah yeah i always explain people like capoeira is not is the unique about capoeira it's not square as the other martial arts mm -hmm. 
we can call it martial arts because because we kick and we have a system and we have a like core system. Well, at least some groups have core system. Then we have the uniform and all stuff. Mm-hmm. But more for us that have been there for a long time is more like lifestyle, kind of like a culture of martial art. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So then now that's the part of, of, of the classes. Now let's jump to to the part how you handle the classes. Okay. So do you, do you have any kind of like like nonprofit or do you have any entity there to for, for your school? Sorry, go on. Entity? What do you mean? Yeah, like, uh, for example, like a non-profit or you have like a company that represents right. Capoeira. Yeah. Right, yeah. So it's um, it's it's three things, actually. Okay. First of all, there's the, the group, you know, like Batu Capoeira, okay. which is with my master, Mr. Vladimir, uh, Contra Mesh uh, Salsicha, my professor of Eminosu, uh, and then it expands to the different instructors. We're like in 15 cities now. Okay. I think the strength is that Divided in all these cities, there's so much uh, unity. We're one That's group awesome. with one vision and one style and one uh, yeah one connection. So we do everything that's together. Awesome. Uh, a lot of communication. I think that's uh, a thing that's really powerful about our uh, group and structures that we communicate a lot. It's not like I'm doing my thing and he's doing his thing and yeah. she's doing. But we're doing one thing to just level capoeira in general. Besides that, there's the part of the, the, the business side, which is I'm an entrepreneur. So, okay. uh, like by myself, I have my own company. Okay. Which is, you know, we have like the group, and then I have my part, which is Capoeira Energia. And I teach my classes under that name. And uh, if people uh, want workshops or we have demonstrations, then they, they call my company or they end up in the company. But okay. I do everything under the name of the group. Okay. What do they uh... call my colleague in another city. It's always okay. Batu. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, is that is that company like a non-profit or is it like a company company? Yeah, it's a company. So this is, uh, we also have a non-profit uh, organization. Oh, cool, okay. So different projects, like uh, we have a lot of projects to help uh, people, to volunteer, to help kids or help uh, uh, expats or whatever. Uh, but that's the third thing I was talking about. And my thing is just it's a company, so people charge, uh, people ask for like a class or a workshop, okay. charge them, and we uh, uh, we provide the, the, the workshop or the class or the demonstration or whatever it might be, uh, and that's what I make a living off. So yeah. Oh, okay, okay. That's and uh, for example, like here in the U.S., is uh, almost all the company one of one of the structure how we can uh, structure a company mm-hmm. is LLC. Which is a limited liability company. Okay. So how 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 do you call those there in, uh, in uh, Europe or in Amsterdam? I'm not sure. The thing I'm doing is called a uh, it's a set to pay. So it means you have a company by yourself. Okay. You don't have any employees, so I cannot have employees. And uh, you can do your business. You have okay. to uh, keep a record of uh, keep track of your all your finances and all your uh, uh, clients. Okay. And customers. And then you just do like a workshop. You say, okay, uh, well, we can do this in this day. Like we have workshops almost every day nowadays. It's crazy. And we travel to all these schools and businesses. We do the job. We send the well, the, the bill, I think it's called. Okay. We say, yeah. I, I just send the bill to them and they pay and that's it. And then, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So you had what here. Part- I'm so sorry, go ahead. You have to pay uh, that I myself am responsible for my pension for when I get ill, for my holiday uh, money, I have to pay everything. Okay. So there's no, no help from the government. They help if you make, if you make uh, under a certain amount of money. They can help you. You get something back from taxes. You don't have to pay taxes in that case. But in my case, I just pay a lot of taxes and the risk is mine. So if I break my leg, I have a you problem. You just to not to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, here's like a... a solopreneurship i think it's called here yeah solo exactly okay okay no that's awesome because uh and how how do you approach like schools do you use the non-profit or use the company we use the company for all the commercial activities okay so, including schools yeah like schools and oh, businesses okay. like for example the the they have like the 
an ICT company or a computer company or whatever, and they want to do a field trip, they want to do something special, they call Capoeira, we do a workshop with them, or like the festival I was talking about with the DJ, and okay. uh, do a performance, yeah. and we just have a bill, they pay, and that's our work. And if you have like special things, like demonstrations or something political or something with refugees, for example, okay. that's all, that's all uh, uh, just oh. can help people. Yeah. So use the non-profit more for like scoop for something like the city city? Yeah, well, more so for any, uh, um, yeah, like non-profit uh, activities for people who, who who we can help with Capoeira, like refugees, a lot of refugees okay. in Holland, we can do uh, non-profit activities for them, like workshops, or small schools or small businesses don't have a lot of money. Okay. Uh, we can do a non-profit organization, or if we have a special demonstration for political ends or something, that's always uh, through the non-profit uh, organization. Uh, and most things are uh, are like businesses. It's just like the solo. Oh, okay. It's like I was telling you, it's solo, but it's not solo because I do my solo yeah. thing, colleague. But we're all like uh, one, one, one mind. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome that you you all of you work for just one vision, which is Capoeira. Exactly. Yeah, and there's so much working together. So, for instance, if I have a show, a Capoeira show, okay. I cannot do it myself. So I call my colleagues, my instructors, my teachers. Oh, that's awesome to help and we do this crazy performance and then another week they call me hey can you help me i have a show i need some people can you do some flips whatever and we get over there and no one pays anyone okay it's collaboration you know and no one keeps track like are oh, you help me three times i'm gonna help you only three times or once yeah or we just we're all in there for capoeira if anyone is able to help we all help so it means a lot of traveling a lot of uh, and that's why we that's the cool thing that we see each other a lot because oh, that's like, true yeah like hours away and my, my master lives in another city hours away but because we we help each other with demonstrations with workshops we get this uh connection that's awesome yeah. no that's that's pretty much a lot of goals for for a lot of schools to have that connection with your ministry and have that connection even with, with your own school you know i think i think that's really really cool yeah i'm really happy we have this uh, this uh this structure oh yeah that and that definitely works because So everyone help each other to grow. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and that's that's how you I can you know like back in the day when I started off, my teacher would come and visit and they would help me if I have any events because I didn't have any students. If I yeah. would do a demonstration with only two students, you know, you know. So all these yeah. other students came from different cities, and someday some some other guy is going to start a new city because now I'm like the youngest instructor. Maybe another one will come, and I will help them to develop their. Uh, okay you know to have to don't have that, this empty empty uh, gym you know to have some yeah. people to perform you know and then grow with his group because in the long term it's going to benefit all of us uh, that's true yeah yeah benefit where and that's the most important thing yeah because at the end of the day whenever you have an event then yeah. all these people can come to your to your event and all their people comes to then exactly that helps yeah, yeah. yeah. all that helps a lot plus I just feel like us as a human being, we follow crowd. So if we see a class that is 10, 15 people, even if they all already do Capoeira, you're like, ah, what's as a bunch of group people doing a bunch of kicks there. Yeah. So that attracts a, a, a lot of the eye, this eye catching. Yeah. Nice. So how, Anna, how, how do you think Of should someone start with a nonprofit or a company? Someone is start to teaching. Uh, What do you think honest, is easier for you? I think uh, if at any point you you consider or your master considers uh, you're uh, ready to to teach capoeira, in what kind of way, like like helping out or starting? I think the first thing you should ever focus on is just teaching for a while and and uh, feel whether it's 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 a good thing for you. If it feels good, yeah. if If, if you can you can feel the uh, how people react to you teaching yeah. to your things and if at one point you're like okay this is working for me and it feels good i want to do this for a longer time and um i always started teaching capoeira uh not i never had the vision to to live from capoeira like make it my okay, own yeah. so i yeah. started teaching because i love teaching uh, the first awesome. year, the first year i lost money on teaching i was paying more travel expenses Because I had only three students and I was traveling two hours, yeah. two hours. I never started teaching and thinking about business. 
Okay. But then at this point, when I had like schools calling me to do workshops and I had to call my teacher to use his business uh, number, you know, to okay. make it because they cannot just give me cash, you know. They, they yeah, need, yeah. You know? So and then came this point where my teacher said, okay, man, you're doing, you're borrowing my stuff, you know, you should start your own business. <laughs> yeah. So I think it, 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 it's the best way is to let it come naturally. You know, if, you, okay. if you're teaching and you're already thinking about making a business, then you're doing capoeira for the wrong reasons, I believe. Okay, okay. Because you love teaching, and then you hit a certain level where you're like, okay, I cannot, this is not a hobby anymore. This is too much. And yeah. then you start a business. And then I think the best way to do is uh, uh, in, in, in parlay with your uh, master and his business, you know, because, uh, yeah, he was my example. So I didn't really come up with it. I just followed the footsteps of my teachers before me. Yeah. And it was great. Yeah. That's awesome. So I'm sorry I didn't really answer the question, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you you just gotta feel and see how how people want to start, right? Yeah, because capoeira is like it's it's beautiful, but not everyone uh, needs or wants or has to teach capoeira. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, I think you can be a great professor or uh, whatever and never teach capoeira. I know great yeah. professors and professoras who are really good at teaching, but they don't have the time or priority or feeling to teach on a regular base and that's yeah. and there's some people who aren't really you know like in my case i wasn't really there yet i wasn't really mature in capoeira i didn't have yeah. a professor court but i have this feeling and passion for teaching uh so it kind of came natural and i think uh i think your master is the best one and your teacher your professor whoever is is the best one to know when this moment uh is there just like uh, your new court you know you yeah. can feel ready a new court but you know your teacher he always knows yeah yeah, yeah they, you're gonna be like well i mean i'm ready and then you're gonna be like uh so, not like, yet <laughs> i'm not ready I'm, I'm i i still need some years and then there's this court and you're like wow really yeah yeah because i i feel like sometimes speaking about the court is it like probably the mystery like tells you like you know you can get there yeah yeah then no, that's awesome, man. And uh, how how do you use advertising for those classes? How do you reach people? How do you reach the public for, for your classes? Uh, for the regular classes, um, I always do anything I can do to promote Capoeira. Um, but the funny thing is it's not with the mindset to promote Capoeira. It's just because I love doing it. So first they, when they did the first workshops, they called me in the first demonstrations in the city I was teaching. There are like two or three other groups in the same city. It's not a big city and they are all masters. So I was like, who am I? You know, I'm nobody. Yeah. And then I started growing and growing and growing because every time the city had anything, I always said yes, always. I always oh, went. Of course. Even if I had to pay more travel expenses than I got, I didn't care. I just went there because I love doing capoeira and I, nice. I wanted to water these plants, you know? Water yeah, the yeah. Plants. And then uh, they saw me all this time, like, wow, this guy, yeah, let's call him. You know, uh, we have a bigger event. Let's, he, was, he was good at the small event. Let's call him again. And then it grows, man. And then they offer you bigger assignments, and bigger uh, uh, contracts and bigger events. And that's how you reach uh, a wider audience. I don't have any shortcuts. I don't really use uh, promotions or uh, uh, anything. I, I use Google, you know, Google, right? Uh, yeah. the, the, the Google business um, reviews because it was free. And I sincerely believe if you uh, if you try to do good and you have passion in what you do, that people will uh, appreciate that. Oh, so yeah, I, got sure. all, I did all these workshops like for a really low price and said, okay, whatever you thought of it, whatever you're going to think of it, just give me an honest review on Google. Nice. And okay. You cannot delete any reviews in Google. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very honest opinion. And I got my first reviews and they were all five stars. I have like 40 of them and they're all five stars, all from customers. That's awesome, man. Not about, you know, it's not about oh, the cool flips or whatever or, or uh, the great uh, knowledge of Capoeira. It's all, always the, the passion, the, and the enthusiasm and the drive for Capoeira that's so contagious, you know, it's like a virus. Yeah. I go there every time, 200%, I, I, I share this passion and people just like it so much, they leave a review. And people read this and they start training and they Google Capoeira in, in Amsterdam or in uh, the city I teach. And yeah. they find a group, they see this, this these awesome. reviews, and they're like, okay, let's give it a try. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you are, are like, hey, like, give me a referrals and see 
who you know who I can teach to, right? Sorry, come again. Like, like after you finish a workshop, mm-hmm. that person you you tell that person like, hey, do you know someone I can teach another workshop, like a ref- yeah. referral? Yeah, I always I always ask them. So, what do you think of capoeira? And they're like, wow, I did it. I thought it was cool, but it was way cooler. And they always say because they they know what to expect. They know to see the kicks. Yeah. They know to see the backflips. They know to get the bidding bow, but they don't know the what I think is most important: the lessons underneath the techniques. So, the lessons yeah. about uh, getting out of your comfort zone, try to do a bananera for the first time, which yeah. is great business people and some kids even nowadays, uh, and how to. Uh, get this philosophy of not winning and not competing in capoeira, but yeah. playing. So then they're like, wow, this this really really struck me that it's not only the kicks and the cool stuff, but it's the lessons you you teach these kids uh, besides capoeira. And then I ask them, okay, what do you think of that? They say, yeah, it's really cool. I said, do you want to, do you think other people should uh, experience this as experience, well? Yeah. yeah, so tell everyone. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's it's awesome, not- yeah. And I don't give them like a, card or a flyer or a promotion stuff. I just say, if you speak to anyone and you remember this next week, just tell them. And that's, that's when awesome. the phone say like, hey man, I, I heard about you. Do you want to teach here? And it's, I'm really grateful for all the, all the good yeah. things. No, just, that's awesome. Yeah, that's how the circle goes, man. Yeah. In, uh, how, how do you see the Capoeira community there where you live? Is, do you think it's a stronger where like all groups or all, all Capoeira in general? Yeah, so um, for a small country, I believe Capoeira in Holland is, is pretty big, man. It's pretty, uh, uh, it's pretty known. Uh, like awesome. everyone, when you say Capoeira, they say, "Ah, oh, yeah, no, it's like Brazilian fake fighting or dancing," you know. But um, and a lot of groups, some cities, uh, they even have uh, like a few thousand uh, civilians, and they have like three or four Capoeira groups. Wow, that's awesome! It's a lot, man. They have different masters, different teachers, different philosophies. Um, I try to travel to different groups and events um, to experience different ways of capoeira and I always encourage my students to do the same, especially within our group, to go to my measure, but also outside the group, you know, Yeah. but within Europe, we go to France like five times a year, we go to Germany, we go to wow. different events with uh, the friends of my master and they have this, they have a great uh, uh, collaboration. So my master teaches at their Batizado event. Yeah. Those masters from France and Germany, they come to teach at our Batisado event. That's awesome. The same thing happens. Everyone is helping each other. I think that's why the Capoeira community is so big in Europe. Yeah, I I think so too. Because, uh, well, not everyone is doing it this way, uh, which is definitely not the best or the worst way. It's just our way. Um, But I think this is our strong point, you know, the communication and the the trying to help other people and investing time and energy into Capoeira. And then it always comes back, man. And it's like it's like oh, karma. Sure. Uh, yeah. I think there's also some. Uh, how do you say when things are divided, div- div- divided between groups? Yeah. So like uh, there's a group in, in two groups in the same city, and they never meet. They oh, both. That's live. crazy. Yeah, I've seen so, that before. Um, but it's. I think it's not a bad thing necessarily. It's just people have their own way in Capoeira, their yeah. own group. There's Your no. Opinions, ne- yeah. So that's, that's, there's no negativity, like, ah, that's a bad group or anything. Yeah. Not like that, but just, this is our way and that's their way and we're all capoeira. And if we see each other, it's all good. But yeah, it's, it's that's okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, because, man, every time I see a picture of France, Hungary, Holland, yeah. Germany, I see those big ass events. I'm like, man, the capoeira, he is, I feel that capoeira in Europe is probably like two, three times bigger than Brazil. And it, what do you think? It, it, it might feel that way, but um, well, at least from what I experience in Brazil, it's it's not completely true. But um, I have been in some cities in Brazil, like in Sao Salvador, and uh, okay. Porto. I was training in Salvador, and I thought, like, wow, this is this is the birthplace of capoeira. And then there was a class with three people. Oh wow! Or five people, and I'm like, wow, we have bigger classes. You know what's what's happening here? Yeah. There are so many groups and so many masters, and all these people are so divided. Um, of course, they're big groups, but uh, of course, I didn't get to train with them back there. I was just traveling. I even went to, to the Academy of Master Beam and stuff, and just three or four people. I was like, wow, maybe I have a bad oh, day. Wow. I mean, you know. Um, so yeah, I think Capoeira in Europe is big. Uh, it's 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 uh, 
it peak in the in cities, but also in the small villages. Capoeira has reached even the most out of places. That's awesome. But um, yeah, of course, the view we give people with the events, the pictures. That's 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 the, the big events, you know. Yeah. The real life is also yeah, just doing capoeira with two or three people in a class, or ten people, you know, at the, the okay. real capoeira. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is perfectly fine. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Is uh, uh my, my point is like the capoeira community is very tight. So when you see all these groups coming to big events, like you said, coming to those events, and you see at least like fifty people in one event, it's 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 especially our group. It's so it's you know everyone says in capoeira, capoeira is a family. You know everyone. Oh, for sure. but me, capoeira is like really a family, man. I, I yeah. My 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 trainer, my 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 friend, uh, Chris Minoso. I see him more often than I see my dad or my brothers. <laughs> That's funny. I crash at his place all the time. When I used to train, I was crashing there every week. We travel together. We go to Brazil together. We eat together. We we swim together. We 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 train together. We laugh together. We cry together. Everything. That's awesome. So, uh, this is really cool. We uh, we have uh, we go to restaurants with the capoeira group. We go to the cinema with the capoeira group. Yeah, we yeah. Have the capoeira group. Uh, I'm getting married in two months, and I'm inviting capoeira people. <laughs> That's like, funny. Capoeira people, and then I don't even have regular friends, you know, it's just capoeira <laughs> people. And it's, it's, uh, that's the family, you know, it's beautiful. And if something yeah. happens, we uh, help each other. So, for instance, uh, uh, a very dear friend of mine, he had a, a stroke a while ago. Oh, wow. He's a great capoeirista, he's been training, and uh, uh, all the people visiting because you only have one family member in the country, they were all capoeira people who come wow, into his. That's crazy. That's rec- cool. Bring, uh, Say helping him, you know, uh, cooking for him, and you know, that's so everyone really just cool. just helps each other. Even even I even helped build the house for my teacher. You know, he was like moving and constructing, and he had all these capoeira people working with him. You know, it's just wow, uh, that's awesome. Like a family, so it's more than the training and helping each other at events and workshops, yeah. but more so even outside of that. You know, so you think capoeira like one of the things that capoeira can can help you. Is like having connections, having friends, and uh, meeting new people. Yeah, yeah, more than anything, especially for me. Like you know, I told you the story when I was uh, like 16, 17. Yeah. I didn't have friends, man. I moved like way up country, and I didn't know anyone, uh, and I was kind of lonely. And thanks to Capoeira, I found people to connect with, with the same mindset. And the most important thing I think about Capoeira is that everyone accepts you for who you are. In Capoeira, you yeah. can be whether that's like me, really. Can be and yourself and energetic, you know, and no one is like slowing you down. Like, be calm. Yeah. Like, school, you always have to sit calm, shut up, you know, yeah. be, shh, you know, listen. And in Capoeira, it's like if you're like going, wow, I don't know, everyone's like, yeah, 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 yeah. crazy, you know, yeah, so yeah. That's what Capoeira is, was for me a place to, uh, to just be me, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, for example, like, I always say this in every, every episode, like. Capoeira also like changed my life because I used to be like such a shy kid, a, a shy kid. and uh, today's day, man, I'm I don't care. I start talking to people like even to strangers. Exactly, man, and that's, yeah. that's Capoeira lets people who are like really extroverted and be. And also, I have a student now. He's like he uh, didn't want to go into the hoda. He he, he yeah. was afraid of the hoda. He he saw it as a as a uh, you know he was afraid. And I was like, okay, you don't have to go in the hoda. It's Capoeira. Yeah. You can, you can play, you can train, you can do whatever you want. No one's, nothing uh, is a must. Everything is a, is okay. Yeah. And then he just stepped into the hoda. That's awesome. And, and he became this really shy kid. And now he's like, like uh, if, if I'm like, who, who wants to show a bananera? He's the first one to go, you know? That's he's like, awesome. uh, I want to do it. And months ago, he was like like this, man. And I think that's that's beautiful about Capoeira, man. I even had, we had the show last Saturday for 8,000 people. And one of my wow. students yeah, yeah, I just want to play music, you know, I don't want to play capoeira because people are watching. I'm like, okay, sure. And then the second show is like, yeah, I really want to play. And he <laughs> the stage, man, with the that's camera. Awesome. On, the, yeah. The, 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 and yeah, it's that I think that's capoeira is a... They, they a feed with that energy. Exactly, yeah, yeah. That's really cool, that's really cool. And uh, do you have any any events coming up? Like you, your, yours? Uh, yeah, we have a uh, next... Wait, no, two weeks, two weeks. We have the annual children festival camp. Okay. So we have, uh, all the children from our group divided okay. in all the cities. So I have like uh, kids there and kids there. And over a hundred kids, they come to this uh, two-day festival 
where they have a sleepover and they have capoeira uh, quiz, capoeira hordas, capoeira uh, uh, playtime, capoeira everything capoeira related, uh, and they all get together. So okay. again, the, the community, you know, not like the kids from Amsterdam, the kids from Rotterdam, the kids from The Hague, but all the kids together, all combined and just two days with all the instructors having fun out in the sun, you know, having some water fights, uh, having hordas, of course, uh, practicing instruments. And that's a really cool event. It's called the kids event, but I think the adults enjoy it more sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> These kids, man, it's beautiful. Um, you just become big kids. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. That they sometimes kids are the best teachers, man. Yeah, oh, for sure. The kids teach me more than I teach them in capoeira class, just by observing them and the way oh, they yeah. play and the way they think outside of the box. You know, sometimes they do things in order. I'm like, wow, I would never have thought about doing that, man. Yeah, and it's okay because it's capoeira. You know, no one yeah, exactly. knows how to do stuff. You know, you know, like a beginner doing an uh, armada and kicking with the second leg, like Miruc French. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You never do that when you know you know how to do do a mata, and then someone comes in and he, he turns it. I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, whatever. I, yeah, it, that works. Sometimes, it still kicks. <laughs> so yeah, and sometimes in the hoda, I I have more trouble with the beginner because they're so uncontrolled and unpredictable. Yes, you know, with yes. Advanced player, you you see the shoulder dropping. You know, it's gonna be me, Luis Compasso. You know, and, and with <laughs> and yeah, exactly. With <laughs> beginners and kids, sometimes they do this crazy things. I'm like, wow, you know, sure, yeah. you know. No, their imagination is really cool. It's cool, and the way they interact with each other and uh, uh, see capoeira sometimes. Um, I, I I learn from that every time, and I try to keep learning from that as well. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Like like you said, they they are like really good teachers. Yeah, uh, they are. So, and other besides that, we have our batizado event, but it's uh, going to be in the fall, so it's going to be a bit later. Uh, okay. Yeah, and a lot of festivals, man. We have uh, every year we do this uh, these demonstrations and shows on the, on the, the festivals, the, like dance festivals, and they, they want to get a capoeira act. And I think those are the like really fun, you know, because we stay at the festival for a week with my friends, and we just have a great time. And we do a demonstration every evening, and we do some workshops, and then we do a lot of improvisation. So we walk around the site, and then when it feels okay, people are playing djembe and stuff. We're like, okay, let's do nice. some capoeira, you know, oh, and cool. it just happens, you know, and uh, yeah, that, I think that's uh, those are really cool events, man. Uh, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. And a uh, few questions before we wrap it up. So the, these these question uh, is going to be divided into. So the these are going to be advices for 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 people. Like the the first part of the question is, what would you advise for people that never done capoeira before? Wow, man. <laughs> uh, just give it a try. Okay. I have a lot of emails and people like, uh, I want to do capoeira, but I'm not flexible. Or I want to do capoeira, but I'm not strong. Or I want to yeah. do capoeira, but I I'm not good at it. Yeah, yeah. Why are you going to start capoeira? Because you're good at it, you know? Just, uh, I want to do capoeira on the 1st of January or after I lose 10 pounds or after I quit smoking. Yeah. Or then, 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 then. And I, yeah. I, I, like I told you before, I'm always a 100% guy now. Now, yeah. just I quit smoking on a, on the twenty fifth of May, a regular day. I didn't. I didn't. I like one first of January or after this party. Or after yeah. This. Now today, it's the only day you have. You don't have. Yeah. To. What's your thing? Am I know? It's the same thing we say yeah. with the. Today is the only day you have, man. Yeah. So who took up where? I I went there. I was like, I I didn't even. Know. I just asked, what do I wear? And that's it. I just went. I was like, I'll see. And this is the thing. Uh, I think people should do more, not only in capoeira but in life to just. You know, we say, in Holland we say take it by the horns. You know, just uh, just yeah, go for yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, yeah. I mean, that's true. Just yeah, give yeah. it a try. And and what's the worst thing that could happen? You, the worst thing I, I tried out ten different martial arts when I was doing capoeira. I went to karate and I tried them all. I just I just went. And sometimes I had like, wow, this is so not for me. But then I learned something that night. Yeah, that wasn't for me. So I didn't waste that night. And that way I found capoeira. And then you like, I think this is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And now the second part of the question is what would you advise to people that already do capoeira? Um, I think it's two things. First off, to uh, always, yeah, I don't know, man, just keep falling in love with capoeira because when you fall in love, you want to know everything about a person. And uh, cherish that and accept it, even if even their their the bad sides, their good ones, 
and don't take don't take capoeira and especially not yourself too seriously you know just just it's a progress and it's okay i have progress doesn't go like this man progress goes like this you know and yeah. there's gonna be downs man i tore my knee my all my, my my meniscus were torn my lcl was torn everything was broken uh, i have periods where my capoeira just sucks you know i know to do a move and then i forget to do it i'm like man but i, I knew how to do this yeah and then you get frustrated because you have these expectations of yourself that you should know it or that you have to be better. You have a certain rank, but Capoeira is playing. So why are you taking it so seriously? Keep on playing, you know, uh, keep on discovering. And besides that, I think the, in my experience, the best thing to, to have is, uh, how do you say devotion and dedica dedication. Okay. Never had any talent for capoeira, man. I still don't. I, I never had any talent for anything whatsoever. So my capoeira line was like this. But the only thing I did, I, I just didn't quit. I just didn't know how to quit. I have yeah. uh, like I even have movies when I was in the garden at my parents, and it was snowing in Holland. Like there was snow everywhere, and I was training Ausimo, and I was falling and I was falling down and falling down and falling. And my mom was like, "Get inside, man!" Yeah. And I just kept on training, man. I didn't know how to do anything when I started. I didn't know how to do Aou. Oh, my leg couldn't go higher than this. It, it looked hideous. It still does though. But and I just started training. A backflip. It took me a year to, to do a, a Aou Mortal. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Every time, every class after class, I called my teacher. He took my court and he helped me do the backflip. And then one day I could do it. And uh, I, I just never quit. You know, a lot of people, they, do, they try something in life, especially nowadays because everything has to be fast dopamine, you know, like social media. Yes. It's, we always want to have this quick dopamine and if something doesn't work out the way we intend to, we just quit. True. And that's a mindset that doesn't get you anywhere, man, because there are going to be a lot of things hard in life. You know, learning how to drive a car is hard. Going to college is hard. Having a marriage yeah. is hard. Having a job, it's hard. And if you quit, then you'll never find uh, happiness because I found happiness through dedication. I just kept on training. And I kept on falling and I kept on being the guy laughed at, uh, training my, my bananera and falling down every second. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I can stand for 10 seconds. And I even sent videos to my teacher when I was in Brazil for the first time. I can stand for 30 seconds. Look, and I was in bananera, you know? Yeah. And then I reached this minute. This, this, I, can, I can walk on my hands for a minute and I can turn. I can go to my head and to my hands to get a jeans. And nice. not with talent, but just with every single day repetition. And you just have got to love the grind, man. Don't work towards the goal, but enjoy the, the grind. I, yeah. I, I work towards the goal too much, man, in Capoeira. I wanted to be a teacher. I want to be a graduado. I want to I wanna, uh, be a good a Capoeira. I want to play Birimbao. I was so looking towards the goal that I just forgot to enjoy playing Capoeira. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. when I found out, wow, I should enjoy playing Capoeira more. And then the goal will come eventually. Just repeat and wax on, wax off. And yeah. You're going to come by yourself. Yeah, travel, you know, travel as well. It's very important, you know, travel and uh, travel within physical form to different places, but okay. also travel in here and here, you know, to, it sounds kind of crazy, but I think you know what I mean, you know, travel, yeah, read, yeah, yeah. watch doc documentaries, listen to the music, capoeira music, and try to really listen to it. Not like, yeah. Songs, but okay, what are these people meaning by this? And what does it, what does it mean? You know, like we sing uh, Luanda A and stuff, but what, what did Luanda mean for those people? It was more than a place, you know, it was a, yeah. it was a, uh, imaginative feeling of freedom, you know? And, and uh, yeah, I went to the Senzalas in Brazil, uh, where the slaves lived just to experience and, and travel in, in my mind and in the past. And okay, what, what did Capoeira mean for these people? Yeah. You know? How so, did they feel in that moment? How did it feel in that moment, you know? And yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, that capoeira should never become a workout. Yeah. I would do capoeira with only jinga and a, a music speaker. Oh, yeah. And kicks. We do everything in Portuguese. We play our own music because capoeira is capoeira, is capoeira because of all those things. Because yes. all this cultural history. Every time I teach, even if they say you have 30 minutes to teach capoeira once, I always speak about the history to have people understand why it is that capoeira is capoeira. Yeah, yeah. Go so home and I'm like, mom, today I learned this kick. But then, okay, I learned this kick, but I also learned about this this history from the slaves and from Brazil. And, you know, this. I think this is cool to travel within capoeira's history and travel within capoeira's yeah. and uh, capoeira's connections. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, that's awesome. How, how do you think, to, to last, to, to wrap it up, how, how do you think 
capoeira can come together, they make the community, capoeira community stronger? Uh, I think we should embrace the modern age. I think things like this is awesome, man. It's social media, YouTube, podcast. Yes. Uh, there's so much knowledge out there, and there, yeah. there's this connection. The world is a smaller place than it has ever been. And yes, yet, true. we're more disconnected than we've ever been. That's completely true, I agree. Yeah, so I can see all these people in my group on Facebook and Instagram and uh, on other groups and traveling. And, but instead of you know being connected in this form, I should just go there and connect with them for real. And sometimes yeah. I'm talking away like four in the morning with someone from Capoeira and have these oh, great yeah. conversations. You know, you know what I mean, man? You're talking yeah, yeah. Capoeira way of life and blah, blah, all these things. You end up talking about you know nature or politics or whatever, or music. Yeah. And, whatever. and uh, that's how we should connect. So it's True, great that we yeah. connect through the internet, we connect through messages, and this is we should embrace this, man. We should learn from each other uh, and, uh, and and watch things. I was watching you for a while, uh, to be honest, on, on social media. I was like, wow, oh, this nice. guy Thank you. It's really cool what he's doing. He's, bring, he's connecting you. people and not, you know what I think is beautiful? You're not putting them into a road like, okay, uh, you talk about this or we, uh, uh, you, you leave it in the open. You're like, okay, what yeah. do you want to talk about? What's your experience? Without putting a, I say a stamp on it. Without putting yeah. a, uh, yeah, like you know what I mean. Like putting yeah, a, yeah. Like like a standard or something. Yeah, like a label on it. You know, just so this is this is what it is. So connect and to make a bigger community. I think uh, to embrace all ways of connection, all the variants. That's of awesome. Social media, websites, YouTube, uh, podcasts, books, uh, forums. You know, talking to each other online, but also in person. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that that's, I always say this too, that Capoeira was created to bring people together. Like at the moment, they ran away from, from, from the Kappa ties to like, they were about to get killed. So they went to the Sinsalas to, mm -hmm. to all the Quilombos um, and uh, yeah. to, to help each other, to like have community thing, being like, hey, you're running away, you have a home here. Exactly. People are are made to be together we're social creatures we are social creatures and uh in society we're too much uh nowadays the the, 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 the difficult thing about social media is it's promoting so much ego it's uh and everyone's falling for i'm falling for it a lot as well you know promoting yeah. all this these ego things look i'm but uh our uh, capoeira or my capoeira or my but um we are social people and it's a very 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 lonely road if you Focus only on yourself, you know, it can be True. good for your yeah. social media, but not for your real life and for your real happiness. So uh, there's a cool African saying, which uh, which I love, is if you want to go uh, fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together, man. And that's that's kind oh, of awesome. I like that one. You know that one? It's uh, Yeah. It's one of my favorite, man. So if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And, that's uh, really cool. I like that one. Yeah. And that's that's how I see Capoeira, you know. And uh, yeah. That's awesome, man. And uh, so to, to wrap it up, what are your social medias again? How people can contact you or so, yeah, can find you? The best thing is to just uh, go with, with the group, which is Batuki Capoeira Holland. There's only one, Batuki Capoeira Holland. Um, you can see the famous picture of my master with Matelo in the Hashtera. Yeah. Everyone knows it. <laughs> Copyright, by the way. But uh, <laughs> my personal things are all on Tum, which is T-U-M and Energia, which is my Capoeira name. Both Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Snapchat, whatever, and uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's and awesome. Man. To to train at any of our places, you know, if you ever find yourself in Holland or anyone does listening to this, uh, the doors are always open and the heart is always open to anyone. Awesome, thank you so much, man. Yeah, I'm. I definitely, definitely want to visit Holland because have is so many, so much capoeira there, man. Uh, and I, it's it's really cool, man. It's uh, yeah. It's, I, I feel like I can do capoeira every day. <laughs> You can, you honestly, even just within our group, you can do capoeira every day and That's you're still awesome. making classes. That's so cool, you man. You like traveling a lot, but it's a small country, you know? Traveling yeah. is an hour. So, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, That's the cool thing about like Europe. It's a lot of like, it's big countries, but it's also, also small countries. It's Everything's fun. super close. And it's it's as small as you make it, man. Uh, me and my teacher, we had this event in Cannes, you know, Normandy, where they had the D-Day the with the Second World War, you know, the beach, the D-Day beach. Sounds familiar. So it's in France, and it's like seven-hour drive, 
and they had this event but we were both teaching that day and he's like yeah i want to go to the event i, like, I want to go to the event too so we had our final class we just took the car we drove seven hours That's we arrived awesome. in the morning we didn't sleep we just took a coffee we did the batizado all day long and afterwards we drove again seven hours wow driving 14 hours just to do one day of capoeira event and we we're like yeah, it, <laughs> it was all worth it you know without sleep and then the next day we had to work both of us Oh, crazy. Well, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Do it, but, but it, it's so small if you make it small. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Big, make it big. If you're like, ah, oh, man, but that city is an hour away. It's too far. Oh, come on, <laughs> man. If you want to do seven hours just for one day, then one hour is nothing, man, you know? Yeah, well, I always heard those stories from, from masters where they were like, well, I used to travel hours, like 12 hours from this place to that place to train, same Spring. yeah man and that's it it's it's it you know the world is so small and yet it's it's getting bigger for some people you know because of their mindset yeah you just when i started training capoeira I, i i traveled all the way to train every week in a city like uh an hour and a half away just to train and i went to the hague with my master to train and i went to events to train you know uh and when we heard like mesh accordion and mesh jao grande they were that's in dope. last year and i was like okay i, I had seen mesh accordion a few times We even sang with him all night long. It was, it was oh, so. Oh man, Mesha Jao Grandi was there. I haven't. I, I never met him. I was like, I want to see Mesha Jao Grandi. Yeah, of but course. it's a six-hour drive. I'm like, I don't care. Let's go. And my teacher, my friend, he just had a car accident. He, 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 he the doctor told him you cannot walk. You cannot do anything. So I was like, okay, but we need to see Mesha Jao Grandi. So I will drive. Yeah. Just sit there and drink coffee. Let's go. <laughs> and we went to the event, and Mesha Jao Grandi was teaching, and he just started doing capoeira right away. My friend. He oh, was, he, cool. Uh, He was doing bam, bananera, au, jeans, everything, punch. He forgot all. <laughs> he forgot all about it. You know, it was. That's, it was awesome. really cool. yeah. That's really cool. That capoeira just can like move you yeah. and make you forget. And and the thing is, you know, in capoeira, besides uh, soccer and other stuff, we can meet our idols. You know, we can train yeah, with these for men. For sure, yeah. And uh, you can train. Uh, mesh, I met Mesh Accordion, Sua Suna, Shpiramini, Mesh Chokanji, Mesh Curio, uh, Mesh Boca Rica, all these, oh, these, these, nice. these meshes, you know, Mesh Palais de Bomba, all these, all these meshes, and Boa uh, Gente, uh, Mesh Russo, Mesh Zepikeno, all these meshes. And you can not only meet them, but you can like talk to them and connect yeah. with them. Uh, have a... Shake have their a, hands and I'll be like, oh, hands, you know, yeah. that's Like, hey, Mesh, but they, they also ask you questions. They want to get, yeah. you know, it's like connection. And that's, I think it's so wonderful about Capoeira. It is. It is. Yeah. Like, for example, one day I went to New York and Mr. Tony Varga was there. And I was oh. with Mr. Tony Vargas all day. I and love talking. I love had lunch with him. Man, it was like one of all my idols because I heard like Mr. Tony Varga so many times. I was like, man, this, this, this guy is so cool. And I yeah. got to meet him. I was uh-huh. like, man. Did, did, did he sing at the event? Did he sing? Oh, for sure, yeah. Oh, he, a, was... Anywhere he goes. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's dope, this man. He's just awesome. The meshes you can meet, like we had with uh, Mesh Camilliao and Mesh uh, Cordion stuff. With Mesh Jao Grandi, after the event, we went to the, the Rhine, the big river in Germany. And okay. we just sat there swimming with like only 20 people. And Mesh Jao Grandi was there. And I was sitting next to him oh, on a bench. Cool. And he was just asking for cookies. And just we were just having fun <laughs> in the sun. People went for a swim and the vibe was so relaxed, you know, it was a, I, yeah, this is one of the beautiful, beautiful things about Capoeira. And you have those guys that they have so much experience and uh, they have yeah. met so many people. Yeah. And it's so cool. I think, it, I, I don't think there are a lot of sports where uh, after a certain age and after a certain athletic peak, uh, you're still that much appreciated only in Capoeira. Capoeira, you know, like a, a famous soccer player when he's reached 60, nobody, you know, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, cool, that's yeah. it. That's it. They're not doing yeah. a lot, maybe doing some commercials. But in Capoeira, if you're like master and you're like 80 years or 70 years, people will like worship you, man, because of your knowledge, <laughs> yeah. because of your Capoeira experience, because of uh, yes. uh, your philosophies, your music, maybe. Maybe you can still, maybe you cannot play Capoeira physically, but you can still play Capoeira here and here and with your beating bow, you know, so. Yeah, I, I think it's wonderful that we uh, never forget to appreciate and v- uh, value the the older masters and the ones who pioneered this beautiful art. That's awesome. No, that's yeah. really cool. I mean, that, that's what I love about this too, because I've seen so many people, so, so many masters, the old masters that they keep saying, uh, you know, like, this is a road where I'm still learning. Like, 
it's a learning process every day, every time, and it's never stop. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's awesome, man. Well, man, thank you so much for your time. It was my pleasure, man. Thank you so much. And uh, keep in touch. We'll, we'll still uh, we'll talk uh, through internet or whatever. Whenever you are in the U.S. and you're in Indianapolis, make sure you say hi here. <laughs> I'll have to visit the United States. One day my path will lead me there, man, I'm sure. Yes, yes. But I definitely will go to Holland, too. You're most welcome, man. Hook me up. Try to visit us. I'm going to introduce you to the, to the masters, to the teachers. We're going to travel, oh, cool. see the whole country. It's not that big, but <laughs> there's a lot to see. Oh, that's awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. I just want to share something with you really quick. If you are listening to this and you teach or assist to a capoeira class, or even if you have an event coming up, I want to help you. I want to help our capoeira community because there's nothing, nothing, nothing more important to me than help our capoeira community. Because classes are more fun when there's more people to share this, this sachet, this energy is so awesome that capoeira has. So I want to share your class or event in our podcast. So reach out to us with school name or any information on how people can find you and send it to our email podcast capoeira at gmail.com that's podcast capoeira at gmail.com and i will share that information here in our podcast thank you so much for listening i hope you like this podcast if you did take a screenshot send it to someone that knows about capoeira or of course wants to learn share it everywhere instagram facebook snapchat everywhere and help us grow this community with a subscribe. Thank you so much. Peace.